In this tutorial, we'll learn about a non-rigid transformation called a dilation, which is a stretching or compressing of the size of an image. Now, you can call it a stretching or an enlarging or a making bigger of a shape. You can call it compressing or you can call it reducing or shrinking or making smaller of a shape. Right? This is not a rigid transformation, which means that the shapes will not be the same size. All right, if you're following along in your notes, put this on the next line with the appropriate page number. Okay, let's get started. The learning target is that you can perform a dilation of an image using a given dilation factor and determine if it is a stretching or a compressing of the figure. So the rule is to perform a dilation you must be given this number in the k position. That's the factor. The factor can be um, a number higher than one, or the factor can be a fraction, but it's always going to be positive. It can never be negative. All right, let's get started. A dilation is not a rigid motion. It changes the size of a figure. The only thing that does stay the same are the angle measures. So it preserves angle measures, but everything else will change. The side lengths will change, the area will change, the perimeter will change, but the angles never change. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna take this new image, right, this red image here, and I'm gonna slide it back so that B is over B, that A prime is over A, that C prime is over C, and hopefully when I do that, you can see that the angle measures are still the same. The side lengths are completely different, but the angle measures are still the same. Now again, remember, you have to have a positive factor, but it can be a fraction, or it can be greater than one. If you have a fraction, you'll be shrinking. If you have a number larger than one, you'll be enlarging. So the high school words we use are stretching, compressing. To compress means to push down or make more compact. All right, in order to perform a dilation, you need to do one simple move. All the coordinates are multiplied by that dilation factor, and that's it. Let's take a look at the math. So a dilation is a multiplication of the ordered pair by whatever that factor, that mystery k number is. So if my first example says to dilate each point by a scale factor of two, or dilate by two, I simply take my original points and I multiply all of them by two. Two times two, five times two. Negative three times two, seven times two. Four times two, and zero times two. And that's how I get my new points. That's it. Now over here, my second example, it says dilate each point by a scale factor of one third, or dilate by one third. I merely take my original points and times them by the fraction one third. Six times one, divide by three. Nine times one, divide by three. And that's how I get my prime points. All right, remember, to dilate, you simply multiply both coordinates by your factor. So let me do a couple for you. That's called showing your work. It's really that simple. Remember, to multiply by a fraction means you multiply this number here by the whole num by ugh, this whole number here by the numerator. Six times one is six, and then you divide that answer by three. So six times one is six, and six divided by three is two. Negative 12 times one third is negative four. That's it. Now don't forget, multiplying by zero remains the same. Last one. Now sometimes when you multiply by your dilation factor, like this case here, 18 divided by four, you won't get a whole number. So I'm gonna leave it in fraction form. 18 over four is the same as nine halves. 18 over four can be reduced. Negative eight times three is negative 24. Negative 24 divided by four, negative six. 
I think you got the hang of it. Try these four on your own. Pause the video now. Okay, let's see how you did. Great job. Remember, a dilation is not a rigid motion. It changed the size and the location of a figure. So you're gonna have different side lengths, you're gonna have different perimeter, you're gonna have a different area, but you will have the same angle measure. So remember that rule. Translation, reflection, rotation, which we studied in previous videos, are rigid motions. They have the same side lengths, same angle measures, same perimeter, same area. A dilation only preserves angle measure. All right, I know that you may not have some graph paper at home, but I would like to at least model for you one drawing of a dilation so that you can see the change in size. So I'm going to draw the original um, quadrilateral here, JKLM, with the given vertices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's J. K is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 12. Okay. And then M is negative 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's M. Oops, I forgot L. L is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0. So here is my wacky four-sided shape, which is why they called it a quadrilateral and not a rectangle or a square or something like that. All right, remember the rule. We take our coordinate and we multiply by our scale. Zero times one-fourth, zero. A fourth or a 12 divided by four, three. So that's J prime. Let's just do all of our prime points now. Eight times one-fourth, two. 12 times one-fourth, is three. Four times one fourth is one. Zero times one fourth is zero. And negative eight, I'm here. Negative eight times one fourth. And four times one. All right, we're just going to graph these points now. Zero three. New J prime. Zero three is my new J prime. There's my new K prime. There's my new L prime. There's my new M prime. And that's my new shape. And sometimes they overlap. But this makes sense. A fraction means you're going to shrink, and we did. So that's how you graph a dilation. If you have the ability to get some graph paper, give these two a try. I've also provided it in the notes that I posted in the Google Classroom. All right, I think you got the hang of dilations, so give this exit ticket a try. Pause the video now. Okay, let's see how you did. Nice job. And that concludes our lesson on dilations.